actually. She uh, is still being uh, indirectly uh, narcissistically abused, so that's why she can't. Uh, I don't. I don't, don't want to say anything more about where she's at, but she's she's doing something really special and wonderful tonight. I wish I could say more about it, but I ought not. Hi, Soren. Is the volume super low? Thanks, brother. Is that better? Appreciate it. So, how am I? Uh, Samet, hey, buddy. Um, I'm uh, tired tonight. So, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to struggle through. Uh, I've seen 10 hours of clients today and uh, uh, started today wearing a suit and uh, connecting with somebody in Great Britain and um, it's been a long uh, fruitful day of working with folks uh, uh, welcome um, so the sound is perfect now so um, uh, so let me catch up with y'all just a tiny bit so uh, April 26 hi Rick um, uh, so Soren says um, I feel you Mark I'm tired too man I feel like I got my ass kicked by a gaggle of rednecks in Alabama <laughs> oh brother so hi Jackie hi Kelly um, hey Kate Nadine Uh, Kate Nadine's headed to her daughter's uh, uh, bat, uh, softball game, her granddaughter's softball game. So, uh, Lachlan is new, I think, and uh, has a question for me to address. Uh, Renda's great, and she's doing something really exciting, but I can't really say more than that. So, hi, Teresa. Hi, Jill again. So, like I said, I'm I'm a little tired. I'm a lot tired, and um, uh, so uh, had the had the shad anniversary. Um, uh, I was talking about my anniversary of being shattered, and um, uh, so hi Sarah. Somebody. Uh, uh, Message me and she came up with the term shatterversary and so uh, been through that um, and uh, uh, Gonna answer some questions tonight. I've got three questions that people have uh, sent in um, I wanted to talk a little bit about spring weather in Ontario it's spring weather here in Indianapolis, but Renda and I are headed back to the beach on Sunday. So, uh, looking forward to getting back home. It's weird when you have uh, uh, two homes. It's really weird. So, my voice is barely holding out. So, I'm going to drink a little water here. I sure wish I had Jerry here to lay down wisdom because uh, 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 he sure likes to talk and I turn him loose and boy I tell you he, magic happens but we're, we're gonna try to make a little bit of our own magic hi ginger so, <clears throat> so ginger brought up the uh, uh, empty chair work and so I had this client a brilliant client who did she did some empty chair work with her with her narcissistically abusing uh, father and um, it just gave me the idea and I, I did one with my mother um, I did one uh, with little Mark sitting in the chair and then I did one sort of uh, uh, <laughs> 
I, I did one sort of talking about how you would go about uh, doing such a video um, with um, your narcissistic abuser. And then I modeled how to do one with my narcissistic abuser. So, uh, blessed to be alive is just popping in to say hi. So, uh, y'all are going to have to carry me tonight. Uh, I'm super uh, tired. Ginger says, do you recommend, recommend video recording one's empty chair work? Yes, I do. Because then you can play it over and over and over again. Um, I, um, uh, what's wrong with Sarah? Something's broke. Oh, Tim's in the hospital with it aortic abdominal aneurysm I don't know what that is but it sounds really bad so um, b before I uh, get into answering the questions um, uh, I wanted to, to say uh, we're, we're going to change our, our schedule just a bit um, you know, I'm sort of sitting in the sitting in the darkness a little here let me move a metaphor of narcissistic abuse okay that's better better um so uh we're, what we're going to do with the show uh and it's hard for me to say this because because you guys i know love the show and we love the show but but we're going to go start go meeting every other week and let, let me let me share why um, the narcissists can have a command center. Let me write that down, Jackie. That's sort of a cool question. Um, so basically what what's happening is um, I've been doing this for 30 years at Family Tree. And uh, I'm, I'm just sort of tired. And um, uh, when I get super busy, um, uh, what I do is um, my, my complex PTSD symptoms come back. So, um, so basically what will happen is I'll do a show. Two weeks later, Renda will do a show. Two weeks later, then um, Jerry will do a show. So, so none of us will, doing these shows are, are fun and they're wonderful, wonderful, but they're sort of hard, you know, to, to keep up the dialogue. If I could just stop and, and just listen to you all verbalize, then I could do that, but it wouldn't be much of a video. Yeah, I do need some self-care time. So, um, and what I'm doing is when we get back to the beach, uh, what I'm having to do is I'm cutting back to two day, two long, brutal days. I'm going to just work Tuesdays and Thursdays. But when I work three days in a row, I get really tired and really burned out. So I'm going to work long day on Tuesday, rest on Wednesday have a long day on Thursday and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, re being refreshed, um, hanging out with Renda, uh, maybe making a video or two. Um, so, uh, Guy is retiring. I, so, so I guess that's what I'm saying is I'm, I'm sort, I'm sort of semi retiring. So, um, and, and whereas Renda is just getting her master's degree and getting her license and uh, she's all fired up. So as she's moving into um, her passion, uh, my passion is sitting on a beach writing a book. 
Hi, uh, Ismar from uh, Brazil. You're welcome uh, from, uh, for the videos. Uh, Soren says, that's a good idea, man. I'm getting my nurse psychiatrist license so I can work 8 to 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. each day. And f with PTSD, a full workload is soul massacre. And yeah, uh, uh, Soren, I, I wouldn't call it soul massacre. I would call it soul fatigue. Uh, there's another phrase that came up. I was listening uh, to a Tim Ferriss video, and he was talking about uh, time famine. And so sometimes I do, hi, uh, Ellie, I, I talk about uh, uh, time. He talks about time famine. And so I, I suffer from some of that. So um, I'm going to work on exercising, relaxing, losing some weight, um, and focus on my, my marriage. Renda and I are coming up to year one. We were married on May the 7th. And uh, uh, we're taking a, in two, uh, two weeks, we're going to be on vacation. So we'll be here next week. So come next week, show up next week. Um, and then, and then Rinda and I are taking off a week to celebrate our year one anniversary. Uh, can you believe she'd been married to uh, me for a year and she's still around? It's a miracle. So. Uh, anyway, so we'll we'll meet on uh, May the eighth, May the twenty second. So so after the twenty second, it's every other week, June the fifth, June the nineteenth, which will probably be Jerry. Um, I I have hobbies. I just ha haven't been you know investing in them. I love to ride motorcycles. And I love to play basketball, so I got to find a place to play basketball in South Carolina. What I've done here in Indianapolis, the the young studs I play with are just too good, and I've gotten too old and fat. So I play on Sunday morning with a, a new community of my Chinese brethren, and uh, they're not quite as good as the beast during the week. And I, so I've enjoyed a new community of old guy. I call it old guy basketball. It's old guys versus, um, uh, hey, Semfer. Uh, it's old guys uh, versus Chinese guys. Yeah, uh, Semfer, I haven't seen you in a while. So, okay, so that's the announcements. Uh, Jackie, you ask if narcissists have a command center. Um, I know what H.G. Tudor, 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 H.G. Tudor would say. He would say that uh, a um, a greater narcissist, you know, a full-blown, um, you know, nasty, bad-acting narcissist, uh, they absolutely do have a command center. But a narcissist on the um, shallow end of the pool, I don't think they do have a narcissist I don't, or have a command center. I, I don't even think they know that they're narcissistic. Hi, Jennifer. Um, so um, I, I think they just uh, uh, think they're normal people and they don't know that there's a buffer of emotional cutoff and self-absorption between them and other people. Okay, so I'm gonna answer a few questions. I'm gonna start out with an easy one. Uh, Semper says, well, what is a command center? Hi, uh, Rella. Um, Bonnie says, I like the idea of combining coaching, therapy, and counseling with outdoor activities. That sounds like uh, Renda and I. Uh, command center would be uh, basically a guy sitting there with 
uh, five uh, computers. Yeah, that is Andy. A guy sitting there with five computers uh, who's using false identities and they are um, uh, uh, misrepresenting their identities on YouTube and Facebook and Match.com and they're constantly seeking narcissistic supply. So that, that would be a command center. Okay, uh, uh, this one is anonymous. We'll, we'll call her Beth. So Beth says, hi, I'm living with a sex addict who's working the 12 step and it's like waiting for the other shoe to drop. Um, you guys ask about Karen Henry Smith. Unfortunately, uh, Karen is uh, leaving the practice. Uh, we decided to move uh, our leases up here at 113th and Meridian Street. We're moving to 86th and Meridian probably as early as the end of June. And I was surprised and disappointed that, you know, Karen wants to stay in Carmel and didn't want to continue on with the practice. I'm trying to get her to, we've got some old videos of hers that I can reload and I'm trying to um, get that accomplished. So we'll hopefully do that. Rick says, Mark, I'm going through the grand finale, the grand finale for that very vicious borderline. She hasn't been present in our daughter's lives for uh, four, two of the last two and a half years of her life. So um, that is really hard to be um, it would be really, really hard to be going through a finale at this point. So, so, um, so, Aunt, or, uh, Beth says, any ideas on how to deal with this anxiety and constant suspicion and doubt? Okay, so that you got the question. Living with a sex addict, working the 12 steps, waiting for the other shoe to drop. So how do I deal with this, this anxiety and the constant suspicion and doubt? Well, if you're living with a sex addict, uh, frankly, unless they've been in sober for 10 years straight and they're going to meetings four times a week, you ought not trust them. Um, I have all of my uh, couples who go through this and what they do is um, they read a book called Surviving an Affair um, by uh, Willard Harley. And he explains how when you're in a relationship with a sex addict or a narcissist, or even somebody that's just been addicted to an affair, uh, they're on lockdown, all right? That they're on um, uh, full accountability. You, you have access to their cell phone. Uh, you have a tracker on their phone. You, you monitor all their credit cards. You, um, it's not a bad idea to have an additional tracker on their car. They're, they're guilty until uh, proven innocent. And so um, don't sleep on um, trusting a sex addict because uh, in our culture, yeah, we're gonna miss Karen too. In our culture, um, let me get me a pillow from my back here. Ugh. In our culture, it's so easy to re relapse and settle into um, some really unhealthy uh, uh, sexual addiction or narcissistic abuse. You know, you just have to get on Facebook and start winking and sending hearts and next thing you know you're messaging and next thing you know you're having lunch and the next thing you know you're knee deep in something that uh, 
is just uh, really hurtful to a family. Uh, I was working with a fellow today who, who slipped in an affair. I said, at any point, were you afraid? And he said, no. And I said, well, there was your problem. You know, because you should have been terrified of, you know, relapsing or, or lapsing into, for the first time, acting out. What happens is a lot of us, we don't think we're capable of acting out. And we flirt with danger and we flirt with fire and we get burned. So that's what I would say, Beth, is um, don't trust him. Monitor him uh, strictly and um, have him prove that he's clean and sober. Uh, I have worked with people in the past who've actually had their significant other um, uh, get a, a lie detector test. So don't pass by and, and uh, trust somebody who's not trustworthy. So Soren says, intimacy is the real goal of sexuality. Having endless affairs doesn't do anything. It satisfies the reptilian brain, but does so by dissociation, disassociation from the prefrontal cortex, a part of us that wants love. Amen. That's good. That's good. All right, next question. This is from uh, Lachlan, who's new. Welcome, Lachlan. What's up, dog? I assume you're a dog and not a, a lady. Um, I, I call ladies dudes all the time. I'm in therapy. I'm like, dude, dude. So uh, crisp and crispy snore. Or Lachlan says, hi, family tree. I just wanted to say thank you for your videos and streams as they have helped me a lot to understand myself and the abuse and the trauma. Dudes and dudettes. I've got a quick question for you if you don't mind me asking. Is it possible to heal our childhood wounds by fixing our family of origin? Is it possible to heal our childhood wounds by fixing our family of origin? Uh, so Lachlan says that would be useful for me because I'm only 21 and not ready for marriage by a long shot so um, hey Jackie I'm glad that last video spoke to you I make videos just trying to make Jackie cry so if I did I was successful in that one <laughs> I'm silly okay so the question is, um, is it possible to heal our childhood wounds by fixing our family of origin? Well, Lachlan, you can't fix your family of origin. Uh, whoopsie. Um, uh, so Jackie's been crying a lot. Well, that's good, Jackie. That's good work out of you. Um, we don't have the power to fix our family of origin. You know, it's a full-time job just trying to fix yourself. You can't fix nobody else. You simply don't have the power. Um, there's a place in the Bible that says, a prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown. So, if you go trying to communicate about recovery to your family of origin, they're going to stick, say, stick your family of origin theories where the sun don't shine. No, Lachlan, the best way to uh, heal your childhood wounds is to directly ch uh, heal your childhood wounds. So, um, now, 
Jerry Wise would coach you to be in your family of origin, to not be sucked into the game, and to be uh, outside the crazy emotional field. But uh, we can't heal our family of origin. It'd be a disaster if you paid a group rate to go to Milestones Treatment Center and get the whole fam damnly in there. Uh, it would just be chaos and not a lot of healing would go on. All we can heal is ourselves. So, okay, let me get cut up on the co uh, comments real quick. Uh, blessed to be alive, longing to move out of this small town, attempting to avoid them as much as possible. In the meantime, hoping to move in the future to a large city or town. So there is something to be said for new beginnings. Um, so uh, uh, so Randy and I had a new beginning at the beach, and it's been lovely. It's been a little cold. Um, but like I said, we're headed back and it should be plenty warm. And, uh, why is family tree moving? Our lease is over and the, the lease rates in Carmel have gone up 30% and our office is too big with Karen leaving. We're down to six therapists. We got 10 offices. So, uh, Renda and I have chosen, we're, we're moving, we live at 86th and Meridian, and we're going to put the office at 86th and about town across from Nab Road. So uh, it's moving because um, basically we want an office that's half the size and is a lean, mean, money-making machine. So that's why. That's why we're moving. Okay, so... Uh, this is a long question, um, and I don't have a name, so it'll be anonymous. So, so uh, Jenny H. Bonnie says the idea the idea is to focus on your healing and not on the narcissist. Build up your own self esteem and build up your own self-worth. Amen to that. Okay, so here's this long question. Uh, could I have some advice, please? I think this came in through the Facebook station. Hey, by the way, on the weeks that we're not meeting, like in two weeks and two weeks uh, after that, um, we still have the Facebook. Uh, and we just went up to 131 members. So if on a given night we don't have a show and you need a little recovery help, then get on Facebook, the Church for the Narcissistically Abused. There's two channels. Uh, Jennifer loves the group on Facebook. There's the public channel, and then there's the secret handshake channel. And Renda makes you give a secret handshake. Or she has to okay you before you're allowed. Because we don't need trolls trolling on our uh, safe ground. So, so, okay. Uh, can I get some advice? I raised some serious concerns with the leader of the children's ministry last week about the lack of safeguarding measures we have in place for, for protecting children in our church. She's the pastor's daughter. The pastor is my landlord. Okay, these are some uh, weird uh, uh, dynamics. Hi, Alexander. When I say serious, they're, they're breaking UK laws. She became very defensive and then tried to guilt trip me by uh, backing into volunteering. I withdrew from the ministry by this point and I wouldn't be covered by insurance should anything go wrong. You know, we live in a very litigious society and unfortunately you have to uh, protect yourself. So she says, I emailed the CCPAS to ask for clarity about the situation. Uh, whilst protecting the church's identity by keeping them anonymous. 
um, they agreed they were uh, failing and there were breaches of law and offered advice for my leaders to follow. I emailed my pastor uh, as communication had broken down with his uh, daughter showing him the email I sent and their reply. He told me he was disappointed with me and brushed over the failings by giving blanket replies. Some I knew were lies. So Bonnie says to Andy, may I suggest having some alone time with music in the background that sings lyrics that you are feeling. Sweet. Sweet. I uh, put a, a video, old video I made on my, my personal Facebook channel, and it was, What became of the broken hearted? Mm -hmm, then I started... Da, 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 da. I don't know the words, but uh, I made a video about the brokenhearted and used that old Motown uh, tune. Um, so, um, back to the question. Um, the pastor was giving blanket replies, and uh, the, uh, some I knew were lies. He defended his daughter's failings and made excuses for the safeguarding officer's incompetency. Uh, thank Wild Roses. I don't think any uh, bands are breaking down my door for having me being the lead singer, but um, I felt like I uh, lost respect for the pastor at this point. I've been dear friends in the church who I don't want to hurt by leaving, but I don't think I can attend this church anymore. This isn't an isolated incident, and many people have left over the past 12 months. Thank you for reading this post. So, um, I forget, again, I, did, I didn't copy, I see your little picture, um, but you left this on Facebook and, and wanted me to respond, so here's my response that... Um, one of the most valuable things of going through narcissistic abuse is you get to know narcissists and see them coming. And whereas before, if you don't see them coming, then it's very, very, you're in a very dangerous place. And there are nar narcissistic sharks lurking the pews in the best of churches. And there's a biblical admonition that Jesus gave. He said, you know, go and share the word. It might have been Peter. I don't think it was Jesus. I think it was Peter. Go share the word. And um, if they don't listen, then uh, uh, wash the dust or wipe dust off your feet and walk on out of there. So... Or it might even be an Old Testament prophet. I usually know, um, but the, the point is, if you, whenever you're deal, dealing with a narcissistic uh, system, I'd like to recognize you as male because they like me to recognize them. Whenever you're involved with a narcissistic system, um, then, uh, First of all, you got to see it. Second of all, you got to back up and protect yourself. Um, I had a recent experience with a covert narcissist who was very deceptive with themselves and deceptive with me. And it felt very familiar. It felt like I was being mind fucked. And everything would get turned around and seen as my fault. But the more I got to thinking, it's like, nah, this is who this person is. So I ought not have invited them into my uh, system. Um, and, you know, uh, we, we, were, we were talking about in our staff meeting, we, we've, my, due to my shattering and how that looked to some people, you know, we're understaffed now. 
um, we, we normally were up to 10 or 12 and now we're down to six. And somebody said, uh, we've got a loyalty problem, by golly, here at Family Tree. And I said, no, you don't. Y'all, y'all have a, um, a Mark Smith problem. And so, you know, when you, when you go through shattering, people won't understand and they'll jump off the ship. So, okay, some good comments are coming in. Um, Soren says, I know which one you were talking about, Mark. It's so true. I've had to do that with my sister. I'm here for her when she's ready to change, but I'm done fighting her and her psychopath husband. Natalie, hi, Mark. Thank you so much for your videos. I'm in recovery, the recovery process, but I still live with my narcissistic family. What advice would you give about me keeping recovery while in this toxic environment? Well, Natalie, um, my advice would be to work on yourself. Get up in the morning and exercise, then meditate and pray and go to 12-step meetings and get a sponsor and watch a lot of really quality YouTube videos. Um, blessed to be alive, I had to leave a church before I even knew what narcissism was and then came to realize how many narcness monsters, like Loch Ness monsters, narcness monsters, in the church that I had to deal with. I did answer. Jackie says, I'm getting stronger every day, and this channel has helped me a lot. Soren says, so much of recovery is learning your personal limitations, having what John Bradshaw calls a healthy sense of shame. Once you have that, life becomes easier and less crazy. So that's what I'm basically trying to do uh, with moving to every other week. <laughs> and that is, I, I, I know my limitation. I'm old. I have complex PTSD. I want to sleep in. And um, with, the, with the practice being low and us being locked into a really expensive lease here on our current uh, fancy building um, I uh, basically have to work uh, a lot of hours to you know help keep the bills paid but that'll be going away uh, before too long and we have plans to expand the business and work less okay uh, Bonnie says, many YouTube videos on self-differentiation true from Mark Smith and Jerry Weiss. You know, I don't really talk much about self-differentiation. Uh, that's more Jerry. So I encourage you to watch his videos. Alexander, Mark, would it be an idea to make a video on how narcissistic parents see their children as extensions of themselves and the damage it causes their child. Hi, Zach. It's okay, you're late. I was late, I was 20 minutes late. Um, so, um, yeah, that would be a good video that they see, they see their children as extensions of themselves and they don't want to let their children um, be um, themselves. They want them, their children to be under their thumb at all times. Well, I tell you what, I was tired, but as soon as I start um, sharing, you know, things start rolling out my mouth that I ain't know where they come from, but good things. Lori says, much love to you all and even you wonderful counselors come and get help to all my love mark and your wife for all that you do thank you thank you jeanette jordan i'm late too but better late than never um uh, 
Okay, so I'm running out of comments to read. Uh, Jackie says, um, I keep telling you, Mark, you'd make a great minister. Well, that was my first choice for a career. Um, but when I start sharing, I go to preaching. Uh, I was working with the Jamaican couple from uh, Great Britain this morning, and I was I was I was pointing them both strongly toward each other, and uh, they both were looking at me sort of. I'm like, don't shout me down now when I'm preaching real good. <laughs> And they laughed, and they knew what I was saying was was true. Okay, Soren says, John Bradshaw said, one of the markers of a healthy family is that people get to leave it when they are developmentally able. Unhealthy families never allow you to leave. That's what's so awful. Amen. I'll take a cup of whatever you're brewing, Kelly, please. Uh, put a little ba Bailey's Irish cream in mine. So. What becomes of the broken hearted? Na 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 na. If y'all, uh, don't um throw in some questions i'm gonna start humming and singing the whole time hey uh Rinda and i watched a movie uh saturday night it was called rachel's getting married and it starred anne hathaway and it mentioned four times it mentioned her going to treatment center at milestones treatment center where i went three years ago and uh i recommend that movie but it's really intense. It's like lots of really painful stuff. It was just a powerful, engaging movie. So Wild Roses says, what is a shattering? A shattering is when you're so broken. You're not broken into 10 or 12 places. You're broken it into a million pieces. It's um, <coughs> it's a uh, confrontation with complex PTSD. So, um, if if you've been through a shattering, you'd know what it was. It's just being, I call it being uh, run over by a truck, and then they back up and run you over again. Then they light you on fire, then they get a knife out and stab you in the heart. That's being shattered emotionally. Okay. Or Spencer. Hi, Spencer. How many years does it take to forgive the one you loved who manipulated your abuse and turned you into nothing but a resource of narcissistic spied and you feel deeply betrayed? It don't take long at all, Spencer. You just have to realize that you recruited them there are no victims in relationship. I said there are no victims in relationship. So once you understand that, that you uh, recruited them for the purpose of you working on healing your family of origin issues, uh, still, it probably took me nine months to a year to forgive this person. But I, tr I truly have let go of any resentment or bitterness. <laughs> Alexander asks a funny question. Alexander says, um, Mark, you seem like a nice guy. What are you like at your worst? I'm just a sweetheart all the time. I'm humble, I'm funny. I have cool glasses. That's me about my worst. <laughs> my wife would be tickled by that. So, so uh, no, 
uh, how, what am I like? I'm sometimes emotionally disconnected. Sometimes I'm workaholic. Sometimes I'm too tired and beaten by my complex PTSD symptoms. I grew up with rage. There's two options when you grow up with rage. You either become a rager or you marry one. So I, c I can be Mr. Fussy Britches if you want to know the truth. Uh, Jilligan, I had a question. It's about listening out about your abuse as an infant, listening to you talk about yours. I've always wondered what happened to me so long ago. Uh, I used to think only a therapist would be this demented. I used to think that when you got to heaven, they sat you down and they got out a... Uh, you know, a DVD player, and what they do then is rewind your whole life, and you get to see your conception, you get to see your birth, you get to see your early on connection before you have memory. I was fortunate that my mother wrote a letter, and she explained the lack of bonding and the turning purple in her letter. So, um, if I wouldn't have known that, that, that I wasn't bonded to her and that I screamed bloody murder, when I went nuts and, and, and went, you know, all complex PTSD, visiting Milestones Treatment Center in 2015, I, I would have just thought I was fucking insane. And, but I realized that, you know, I was just doing the work I needed to do and that uh, I'm all good. So... All right. Beating abuse, disagree, Mark. We're not dealing with my family of origin or not tonight. We're dealing with interruption. Beating abuse, I don't know what you mean by that, but in this channel, we are always dealing with our family of origin issues. And if there's any interruption, y'all signed on for it. Nobody put a gun to your head. Rella speaks, sometimes I get a flashback and it re-violates me for several minutes, but instead, now instead of a day or days, isn't this a victimization time of feeling? No, 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 no. If you have a PTSD reaction, that is not victim mentality. Now, you can take it to a victim level, but most of the time, it's just trauma that's surfacing. And you look like a broken, scared little kid. So, no, that's a good thing. So, Jennifer says, Hello, Mark. I watch you every week and have found something meaningful and healing in your videos. Thank you for what you do. I'm running out of words, characters to use. There's a question to come. Okay, I'll look for your question. Bonnie says to Spencer, I actually don't subscribe to forgiving them if they are not seeking it. I got to disagree, Bonnie. I haven't heard a peep from my narcissistic abuser in three years. And... She's done nothing to gain absolution or forgiveness, but I need to do that for me. If I'm the one who's responsible for my life, and if I'm the one who arranged my shattering, and I didn't know I was dealing with the devil, that's on me, brothers and sisters. And now I'm preaching real good. I'm just saying. Okay. Okay. So, Wild Roses. What if in therapy, your therapist says she believes your recovery is in the years of your childhood you don't remember? She's probably right. You know, the biggest damage that happens to us is is in the years we don't remember. And I was blessed to 
be brought back in time by my mother's letter, but not everybody's that fortunate. Just had a hankering for some good old clean, fresh water. I, uh, I played basketball with my Chinese friends Sunday. And since I hadn't played, I played seven games straight. Got all hot and sweaty. Didn't really play particularly well. Uh, I play better when my little brother's in front of me because he's 6'4 and his three bills. And if he sets pick, it gives me an opening, and all I need is an opening. I can knock down the three, but I don't get an opening. I throw an air ball sometimes. Um, what does that have to do with anything? I don't know. I'm just operating on my stream of consciousness here. Um, all right. Where are we? I went way ahead. What becomes of the broken hearted? <laughs> Blessed to be alive, says Jackie. I know all about ABT, and that my dad died on my 10th birthday in Vietnam War. His right uh, wing was shot down. That's terrible. Over there fighting a war we shouldn't have been in, uh, sending all those people to their deaths. Um, okay, 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 here's Jennifer's question. I've heard you say that if you get butterflies around someone you have a crush on or like, run to the hills. Um, well, if you're not uh, strong and centered and whole, uh, you're not ready to date a healthy person. They wouldn't be ready for you. They'd say, go get healthy. Um, but, uh, yeah, if, if you're getting butterflies and, and you see tons of red flags of the narcissist run like hell, you know, uh, it's a little coarse, but I'd talk with my guys in group therapy and, and one of them was being tempted to act out sexually. I said, don't think of her as the hot new chick. Think of her who the, as the bitch who's going to take your home from you and take your children from you. She's not your friend. Blessed be alive, they say time heals, but you would never forget the loss of your father. Time does not heal, folks. Crying heals. EMDR heals. Yoga heals. Therapy heals, uh, watching great videos heal, exercising heals, but time doesn't heal. Time just covers over. I know a man um, who went through a shattering about 12 years ago, and he just shut down, and he hasn't unearthed his woundedness or done his work. So time ain't going to heal that. Jennifer says, I've heard you say that if you get butterflies around. Okay, I read that. Alexander, Mark, how did you experience your mom's rages as a child? And later on, what went through your head and did you feel? I've always, I was always in shock as a child and waited until, I was, until it was over. Oh, man, uh, Alexander, uh, you are asking a tough question. Um, I'm loosening up my belt because I'm, I'm fat. I want to be comfortable. So I won't be getting up and walking around with my, my belt uh, comfortably uh, disengaged. Um, how did you experience your mom's rages as a child? 
and what went through your head later what you thought I was terrified my mother would scream and yell and cuss and rage and I was friggin terrified and what went through your head how did you feel I felt like I was a piece of crap I felt like everything was my fault Shame has a way of twisting around the truth. Spencer, the fact that I had red flags and warnings before marriage, marrying her is a serious issue. Why didn't I care about myself more to avoid a person who had the signs of being a narcissistic person? I need a throat drop. Old songs are running through my head. I'm doing everything I can to sing them. I can't to not sing them. Um, so Spencer, don't don't beat yourself up, young man. Um, uh, I, I had before uh, Renda was dating somebody who was a wicked narcissist. And somebody called me up who, who was a YouTube member. She sometimes is on this channel. And she says, dude, what are you doing? She's a narcissist. She's going to try to use you for money. And, you know, uh, you're, you're going you're, you're, you're gonna to get sucked dry and used. But I didn't listen. You know. People aren't going to listen to your advice about their family of origin issues or they're dating a narcissist. They're going to tune you out and they're going to find out the hard way. I tell folks, you know, you can learn the hard way or the harder way. The hard way is coming into therapy every week. And um, when, when you do that, just grind it out, grind it out, you know, do the work. That's hard. What's harder is to go through through a divorce, lose half your stuff, see your kids half the time, and um, be really financially uh, strapped. So don't beat yourself up, man. CVAC genius, please explain, explain PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, just go to our YouTube channel. There, there's there's one on healing PTSD. Go to that playlist, and they'll explain it all. It's basically um, so. Uh, basically, PTSD is we call it complex PTSD or C dash PTSD. Chronic uh, symptoms include. Anxiety, depression, sleep problems, shaking hands, pain in your chest, um, uh, being discarded, <clears throat> having flying monkeys perpetrate uh, uh, narcissistic uh, abuse by proxy. Those are some of the things. So, beating abuse says mine is still after me. Stalkers. He's getting overt and had a call today. Uh, uh, Bonnie says to Alexander, validating videos. Yes, I found some validation watching Jerry Wise videos. The focus is more on understanding yourself and healing yourself. Hearing you're not the crazy one. You know what? Um, if I were y'all, I'd quit watching very many videos on narcissists. I spend more time watching videos about your own self. To thine own self be true. Um, okay. Bonnie.
Johnny says it's healthier for us to forgive and let go and let's let God. Amen to that. Wild Rose says, I guess the question isn't how do I remember the years, but when am I ready? Amen. Um, Y'all send in way too many how questions. You're asking the wrong question. How do I do this? How do I do that? You can't. There's the truth for you. You can't do it. Um, but what you can do is put one foot in front of another. I used it with a lady in, uh, where is she? New Hampshire, I think, or New Jersey. Um, uh, so she, she, uh, has done such wonderful work and she's, uh, taken a stand and setting a boundary, but she's not following up the boundary. So hubby needs to go. And if they're fragile and needy, it's either you lose your life and you're in the wrong place in the wrong time forever. Or, um, uh, you know, it, that is a possibility that, that you just you just can't, you know, handle. Um, okay. Bonnie says, I don't consider that forgiving. I have to let go. I don't harbor bitterness. But the relationship is not restores as a forgiven one would be. But Bonnie, dude, do this. We cannot control whether somebody else gets in recovery. Now, I can uh, move the office and set boundaries that, you know, cause people to contribute more with marketing and whatnot. But, um, Okay, so it isn't how I remember the years, but when I'm ready, amen to that. It's all about timing. My clients come in face to face and they, they say, you know, how do I fix it? I'm like, we, you're asking the wrong question. You know, you need to work on you. That's it, done. You know, you can, work with another partner or the same partner but uh, wherever you go you are and you can escape one narcissist and jump right back in the, the frying pan with the one that's three times worse Jackie to be blessed to be alive my father was in the second world war but died of an aneurysm three months after i was born my god my mom had five kids with me on the way and almost lost me from the shock that's terrible jackie i didn't know god bless you bonnie so i suppose i use a different definition of forgiveness i don't condemn that person but have Landed that person, handed that person over to God, and let go of the uh, negative emotions and try and hold on to the per person. Well, don't hold hold on to the person. They're narcissists. They're dangerous. They don't deserve for you to hold on to them. Soren Wild Roses. She says, uh, "I know a woman in her sixties who just remembered her incest abuse. My goodness gracious." I know a woman in her 50s, who barely is in her 50s, who recently, you know, recognized her own child abuse. Jack in the Hat says, what's a narcissist? Uh, go look at our videos. I don't want to explain it all tonight and stress my fragile little brain. Um, uh, a narcissist is self-centered. Um, 
they are uh, uh, not uh, sensitive to um, their, they don't know who they are. They think they're good people, but they're not good people. They're dangerous people. Hey, uh, ma'am, how you doing? Okay, I'm getting behind here. Wild Roses, I want to do empty chair work with my inner child when I mark, watch Mark's uh, video, I cry like a baby. I have that effect on women. <laughs> Make them cry. Um, Bonnie, Mark, I'm curious about how to deal with food addictions. Uh, comforting when you're experiencing negative feelings. Is there a suggestion to avoid this? Uh, have you seen me lately? I've gained, I've gained, uh, I don't know, in the past year, maybe 10 pounds. I, w I was up to 15, and I peeled off five here with all this basketball and eating right. But um, so, but our family learned to be nurtured by being given food. So food equals love equals nurturing so so that's that's the uh, example um, Jackie said she liked stretchy pants that's a deep uh, thought there I need a hero Soren, my mother was a crazy bitch, too. She used to convince me I was the reason for her rage. It took a lot uh, out of me, even uh, a little bit more. It takes a long time. Jackie says, I'm just a wee bit chubby. Uh, not me, Jackie. I'm a fat guy. Because uh, I'm working so much, and my brain is so foggy, and where I've been going, the, the, the gym in my backyard and the gym at the gym here at Lionsgate, um, it really isn't getting the job done, you know, for me. So Bonnie says, anyone else have ideas? I'm open to hearing them in regard to food comforting. That's a hard one. Because I could be off of carbs, off of sugar, be good and feel like I'm down to, you know, at least 250. But then I start nibbling on carbs again and it comes back on me. I'm just saying. What became of the broken hearted? Beating abuse says not helping my narcissist trying to kill me for an insurance policy. Uh, I would document that, get a lawyer, and engage the police and get a restraining order. Soren says, Mark, that's so funny. My grandmother, my grandfather said you can be humble or be humble. Hey! What I'm saying is you can be humble. Or you can be humbled. Your choice. It's hard. It's hard being humbled. It's no fair. Jackie says, I was skinny, but that didn't make me happy. <laughs> um, Jack in the hat, how do I get tested for PTSD? Just go to a therapist who has some training in PTSD and trauma treatment. And, you know, maybe they'll give you a free first session and you go and just lay it out, tell your story. And it'll help you to, you know, have that, uh, uh, you know, in-chair session. Wild Roses, I have PTSD and was not in the military. That's a big fallacy. The military is a fraction of the people on the earth who have PTSD. The main reason people have PTSD is narcissistic abusers. 
Can I get an amen for that? Y'all are getting way ahead of me. Rella speaks, I'm compulsively watching narcissistic videos. Where'd she go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Darn it all. Compulsively watching narcissist's videos was going to try to reassure myself I'm not the problem and then try to figure out what the heck happened. But family tree videos really do give me the tools I need. That makes me so happy that all you all are connected with our videos because I know I put my soul and my heart into it. Jackie, did you have to delete somebody who's being bad? Uh, Ma'am says, Jack, that's being a warrior. <laughs> I had a man come in today and he had to talk with his wife about parenting issues. And in his estimation, the wife was enabling the behavior of of the kid and but you could go next week when I'm available and um, okay but being a warrior is all good the local library is a good idea yes what I mean by a problem is the one who has been perpetrated along uh, on the people I love. So, um, so there's a lie being perpetrated on people you know. So, a narcissist can be psychologist. Uh, and this new doctorate, psychiatrist, is too far out of it. Um, uh, there is a lot of good training out there available. And I do, I am thrilled that our family of origin work here at Family Tree and how we tell the truth has unearthing issues for people. Uh, Alexander says to Bonnie, being an extension, it means your parents see you as a mirror of themselves and want to reflect that mirror on them rather than experience of having our own experience. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Whitley says... She's from Gainesville. If you are codependent, does that mean that you have a codependency personality dependent disorder? No. No, codependency is lack of loving oneself. Counterdependency is lack of loving oneself. So it doesn't mean you're, you're necessarily sabotaging because you get so you know, beaten down by the narcissist in your life. What I'm going to do is take take my car back. You know, that was crazy to, you know, I, I didn't give her much, but I thought about giving her the keys to my car, and she, she I guess, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to get off on a rant, so I'm going to play the high road. Alexander says, when you don't have the right to live on your own, it's traumatizing. Yes, it is. Wild Roses question, what do you think of one child, one therapy session a month on the inner child? Um, What's been cool is um, I've, I've got a couple of kids added to my caseload and 
they're they're super mature and super driven and they're going to be a great blessing you know you know to a lot of people um Soren, it's been okay, brother. Um, 198 pounds, the heaviest I've better, ever been. Got to get my fat ass into a gym. A lot of y'all who are suffering from PTSD, a lot of it get better if you get your fat fanny in the, uh, uh, you know, back in the, um, you know, back in the, the relationship so uh, Whitney says I saw on the internet there's a theme called uh, deep, uh, DPD there is, just google it um, it's a form of therapy mainly for use with borderline it's been highly effective uh, Jackie says I'm pleasantly plump and matite Alexander says, Mark, did you have to do homework with your child when you were a little kid? No, she didn't take time. I, I had I was on my own, man. Blessed be to be alive. I'm going on a healthy lifestyle as I needed to lose weight too, and I have an absent narc alcoholic mother. Gilligan says, my little kitty is pleasantly plump. Bonnie says, I had to put up a firm boundary with the older sister who abused me. I stopped going to on her invitation or Thanksgiving and Christmas invitations to avoid my children being subject to being hurt badly. So, who's funny? Hey, look, there's four amens. Amen, 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 amen. Five amens in a row. Somebody preaching it. Preaching it, brother. Earl Gray, I always have extreme exhaustion. You need to rest more. You need to play more. You need to get in nature more. Are you all uh, still with me? So listen, I'm really tired tonight. Uh, like I say, Renda's unavailable. There's nobody to, you know, come hold my hand and give me a hug and walk me through the process of uh, doing the work. But I'm grateful for a beautiful day. I'm grateful for the wonderful practice. I'm grateful for all of you lovely, lovely people. So. Beating abuse says, I'm out of the country. Uh, I bought my papers where I'm trying to keep the man from freaking me out and demanding I leave. I need to find these papers. Well, good luck finding your papers. Uh, Bonnie says, thanks for the explanation, uh, Andrew Wasserman. Mm, he says, let me think about that. I need to scroll up. So, uh, so, uh, I'll tell you about Mr. Polly. He's snoozing there on the ground. He's 10, but he has horrible arthritis. He can barely get up off the ground. But I'm confident that Mr. Polly's going to get better. And we're going to get some medicine at him that kills the pain so he can deal with the, the arthritis. Do, 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 do. What becomes of the broken hearted? I wish I knew the rest of the words. I could sing the song.
Bonnie says, it was a very sick and sad situation. You feel used and not loved, but you are worthy of being loved in a great way. Alexander Walkman. Um, Rella says, Bonnie, what a great and smart boundary with big sister. Glad you are attending the cycle of abuse for yourself and kids. Whitney, uh, God has used family tree to start my breakthrough. Amen. It's like, uh, you know, we have a need and um, uh, I'm just glad that family tree has been helpful, you know, in your relationship. Uh, it makes all the pain and all the struggle and all the financial stress more palatable. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off. Uh, uh, I'm tored. I'm gonna go home and sleep. I've got to get Mr. Polly home. Mr. Polly with his arthritis. Um, <laughs> uh, Ma'am says, I never, I, uh, my narcissist never met a boundary he couldn't smash. You just needed bigger, tougher boundaries, dude. Uh, the boundary is walking away and never looking back. How about that? Uh, Soren says, thanks for getting on, Mark. We really appreciate you. Thanks for slugging it out until the 10th round with us. Much appreciated. All right, bring it up in here. We're going 10 rounds. Um, uh, Rella says, you worked hard today. You did a great job as met addressing as much as you could. And it's uh, uh, very appreciated. Uh, what is the spinning man? I saw that the other day and almost watched it. But what is the spinning man movie? Ma'am says, thank you for the good evening, Mark. Uh, Ginger says, Mark, thank you for your dedication to this community. Um, Bonnie says, hi, Mark. A sincere thank you for your time tonight. I hope you get the break you need and maybe you can listen to some joyful music and find your happy feel again, feel good again song. Um, so I'm going to play you. It's probably going to keep me from being able to uh, uh, monetize the video, but oh well, uh, I want to watch it. talked about my my favorite uh, points uh, my uh, favorite songs um, I'm gonna find those Polly's moving around but he ain't moving very far so I'm gonna search for this we're gonna have some music Y'all, there's a lot of broken-hearted people out there. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, there it is. So... Just one. I, I saw this over the weekend, and I just wanted you guys to get a look at it. Oh, and look, there's a, there's an issue with. Okay. Whoop. All right. You know what? My.
my little uh, sound machines on. Give me a sec. What became of the broken hearted? All right. Now let's try. Here comes the song. Amen. The song's coming. I lost my place. I'm going it. can't find it now. I just had it. Oh, there it is. Weekend of the broken hearted. Now we started. Back in nineteen. <laughs> yeah, grooving to the Motown sound. Uh, I know that all of us have had our hearts broken. I know that many of us suffer from complex PTSD. I know a lot of us don't have a lot of money. I should be a millionaire two times over, but uh, between um, getting divorced and uh, all the treatment I had, I got a little bit of debt. <laughs> Jilligan almost signed out. She would have missed the old song. But you can look up that video. It's called What Became of the Broken Hearted. And it's solid. It's like when I was making videos a year ago, um, they might be better than the ones I'm making now. So, hey, listen, I'm going to go home and sleep. I'm going to drag my little Polly's booty home, have him go poo poo. Um, I'm, I'm going to go sit by the side of the uh, pond and wait for Annie. We have this beautiful, gorgeous swan named Annie. And uh, I, I go outside, I go, Annie, Annie, and she swims up and just hangs out. It's very cool, very cool. Okay, well, thank you for the happy anniversary wishes. Uh, Renda and I will be with you on the 8th. We're going to take Monday the 7th off and just hang out and be happy. We'll probably go eat some crab legs and lay in the hammock and get a nap and get in the hot tub. How's that sound? Doesn't that sound wonderful? All right, you guys. I love you. Uh, sorry that I'll miss you in two weeks, but I'm going to be hanging out with my wife uh, on a cruise ship. Try not to get too fat. So thank you for the happy anniversary issues. Uh, when I was watching the NFL draft, there was a young man who was drafted with one hand. And he said, the truth is, no matter how hard life gets, if you want something bad enough and you're willing to do what it takes, you can go get it. And 
uh, even with, you know, circumstances changing and financial pressure rising, uh, I'm, I'm going to change my life and take better care of me because I, I deserve to come on the show fresh as a daisy and not all fried out of my mind. So, so we need a, a book to go with the videos, The 50 Symptoms of Narcissistic Abuse. That'd be easy for me to write. I just got to get a little focus, get a little more focus in my brain. So thank you for watching. Um, uh, I love you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm sending you 